On today's Winning Cures Everything, we're going over the AAC. All 14 teams, we're doing win totals, we're doing everything else. Who I think is going to win the conference, etc. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. All right. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. It is August 7th. It's Monday. I'm your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Twitter, at Gary WCE, and we are going to talk about the AAC, but first, let me go on and tell you a few things. One, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done that. That helps us out tremendously, and leave your comments about your picks for these teams. What do you think is going to happen with all these teams? Now, the Bet US College Football Show. It is alive and well. Parker and Kyle and myself, we have already started. We've been over... I think 23 games already between week zero and week two. So go ahead and check those out over in the BetUS College Football channel. Also, uh, we did 10 team previews last week on that show. So go ahead and check those out as well. Let us know what you think about those also. Uh, it's August 7th. Like I said, tomorrow, August 8th, Tuesday, I will be in Las Vegas for Bet Bash. That's right. Spanky has done a great job putting that thing together. Myself and some of the other BetUS crew are going to be in town. So if you want to meet up, if you're going to be there, hit me up at GaryWCE on Twitter. You can email me, Gary at winningcureseverything.com. Go ahead and let me know if you're going to be out there. With that said, we got to dive into the AAC. we got a lot to talk about. So let's go ahead and dive into it. We're going to start with Charlotte. The 49ers, led by Biff Pogey. And we'll pull it up on the screen here. That is not what you wanted. You want da, 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 da. there we go. All right, so Charlotte three and nine last year. They uh, they fired Will Healy, and their post game win expectancy two point three two and nine point six eight. So they actually overperformed what their win expectancy was last season. Uh, everybody saw the highlight, right? Biff Pogey at the Conference USA Media Days or AAC Media Days uh, only got three questions from the media, which is a little surprising, even if. Even if that's it, you know, that this is just Charlotte, it is what it is, you would still expect that somebody would have something to ask him about. I mean, he was at Michigan for the last two years. You could ask him anything. Uh, But alas, he only got three questions. He took it personally. Uh, Charlotte picked last in the AAC this season. He's done a really good job via the portal of upgrading the talent. So their projected record at least via all the averages, SP+, plus, CFB winning edge, uh, Kelly Ford, uh, etc., is 4.295 and 7.705. So, the returning production, number 125 in the country, adjusted. Number 132 on offense, number 72 on defense. They lost all their big offensive help. Let's start with the offense first. Uh, the numbers were okay last year. Number 36 rushing success, number 49 passing success, but number 89 PPA per drive on offense, which is not good. Uh, they could legit start six transfers on offense. The new OC that's coming in, Mike Miller, uh, he helped Maryland set you know school records as passing game coordinator during 2021. Uh, he's been at Alabama. He's been at Clemson. This is a guy that, you know, Pogey, respects and believes can help out this Charlotte 49ers team. They lost the quarterback, Chris Reynolds, and and all of their best wide receivers. Any game that they played without Reynolds at quarterback was awful. Absolutely awful. The offense just ground to a complete halt. Uh, the backfield does have potential, and the offensive line should be better. they got eight experienced transfers coming in, and they've got uh, the quarterback, Jalen Jones, coming in. He's a transfer that comes in. Uh, we'll see. I, I don't know a lot about him. I've watched some of the highlights and whatnot. Looks like he could be all right, but obviously we'll see. Uh, on defense, Ryan Osborne is the defensive coordinator. They upgraded the talent majorly, 19 transfers coming in. Um the defensive line brought in a bunch of guys from the Big Ten. So uh, I've got on this sheet here uh, is the defensive line at a Big Ten level now. Uh, it's seven new defensive line transfers. 
Most of them are from P5 schools, most of them from the Big Ten. Uh, the secondary was number 131 in pass success allowed last year, but they brought in seven transfers. Uh, it's two of them from North Carolina, so they should be improved as well. The talent, major improvement this season, uh, so that's definitely going to help. Let's talk about uh, their projected favorites, right? Their projected favorites in three games. They've got five toss-ups where the spread is within, you know, one score. Keys to the season, people talk about Colorado's roster overhaul, but Charlotte took in 37 transfers after they lost 21. Uh, the question is, how do they gel in the first year with a first-time college head coach? Uh, the team is significantly more talented, especially on defense, but we've not seen Pogey as a college head coach yet. So again, who knows? Uh, skill talent was off the charts last year. Is the new OC going to throw it around? I don't think they are as talented on offense this year, at least not at the wide receiver and quarterback position, but I I've got no idea on what style he's going to be running here. Uh, the record prediction I've got is 2-10 and 10 this season, so I've got them going under the 3 at minus 105. That's over at BetUS. Um, look, I, I don't see it yet. The floor for them, I think, could be 1-11. and 11. I think they get the first win against South Carolina State. I think they could easily lose every game remaining on the schedule. Uh, but there is a ceiling of like 5-7. and seven. There are games that are winnable, especially ones that, you know, are coming into Charlotte. Uh, they've got, let's see, seven road games. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, yeah, seven road games this year. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. That schedule is difficult, but... Alas, it is what it is. So, cheers to Charlotte. I, I'm not big on them, but I think that they could be really good going forward. We'll just have to see. East Carolina. Of course, Mike Houston. He uh, he had a big year last year. Uh, the team went 8-5. and five. Let's go ahead and pull it up. 8-5 and five last year, post-game win expectancy was 7.45 and 4.55. So they were 7-5 and five in the regular season, won the bowl game, of course. Uh, this year, they lose quite a bit. They're number 132 in the country in adjusted returning production. Number 131 on offense, number 109 on defense. That is not great. Um, but, hey, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, you lose Keaton Mitchell, the running back. You lose the wide receiver, Isaiah Winstead. You lose wide receiver, C.J. Johnson. You lose some big-time players on defense as well, Miles Berry, Gerard Stringer. Uh, this team is going to be interesting. All right, we'll start out on offense. Quarterback Mason Garcia, he's got a cannon for an arm, but repl uh, replacing uh, Ehlers, is, it, that's not going to be easy. Uh, along with the running back Mitchell, along with uh, two 1,000 yard receiver or, uh, wide receivers, excuse me, I can't talk today for some reason, having issues. Uh, they lost four starters on the offensive lineman. They did bring in starters from South Florida and Akron that have some experience. Likely not going to be as good as they were last season. Uh, this is this is rebuild time. This is when you these smaller programs. And no offense to East Carolina, but this is. Uh, last year was when you have all the seniors, you have all the talent that has developed in the program, and then you kind of restart, right? So they're restarting. Next year should be a whole lot better. This year, eh, interesting. On defense, Blake Harrell. Uh, the secondary was abysmal last season, number 125 in passing success um, and number 131 in pass rate against. So, you know, that's definitely not great. Uh, nearly 60%. Uh, of the defensive plays that they ran were defending the pass. It's because nobody was scared of them. Uh, nobody tried to run the ball against these guys. They are likely starting four transfers in the back seven. Uh, that includes three new linebackers, and they're replacing the cornerback Malik Fleming, who is headed to Houston as well. So that's definitely not good. They're projected favorites in five games this year, and that's about what I've got them winning. They've got six toss-ups, so those are games that I'm seeing uh, – where they could be within one score on the, on the spread. So, uh, keys to the season. East Carolina was number four in turnover margin last year and number 20 in penalties per game. Are the fundamentals going to be as good with a brand new cast of characters? I don't know that. Uh, the non-conference schedule did this rebuild no favors. They got Michigan, App State, and Marshall this year. They did get four former uh, CUSA teams. In here, so let's see. They've got Rice, they've got Charlotte, they've got UTSA, and they've got Florida Atlantic. The issue is three of those are on the road, 
And some of those teams are more talented right now than what ECU is. So that is a little bit of an issue. The overall roster strength is not great. Uh, Mike Houston is a positive, but can he consistently outcoach talent? And I think he can sometimes. He's always going to be a net positive, but sometimes, it, I mean, it's you've heard it before, it's about the Jimmys and the Joes. Uh, the record prediction I've got for him this year, 5-7. and seven. Uh, I've got their ceiling being at about 7-5. and five. I got the, the floor is, I've got 4-9 and nine on here. I think I meant to put 4-8. and eight. But, uh, yeah, there's only 12. There's only 12 games. So, yes, it, four and eight for the floor on this. Uh, I like ECU. I love the helmets. I love the team. Uh, I just think this is going to be a bit of a rebuilding year. Uh, the fact that they could be competing for a bowl game, I think that's a pretty big deal uh, going forward. All right, next on the docket, Florida Atlantic. And, of course, Tom Herman, the new head coach there. This team went 5-7 and seven last year. This was one of the most underproducing teams as far as losses is concerned, uh, just regular wins and losses, uh, that, I, that I can remember seeing. They were 5-7, and seven, and their postgame win expectancy was 7.02 and 4.98. So 7-5 and five is what they were expected uh, with the postgame win expectancy, and they did not get there. Didn't get there. Uh, this schedule this year is awesome for them, by the way. Uh, I kind of hate that Willie Taggart didn't get a chance here, but my gosh, you see, uh, he just found ways to lose games consistently. It was frustrating, I'm sure, for um, for Owl fans down there in Boca Raton. All right, so looking at returning production, number 18 in the country in adjusted returning production. Uh, you look at the the roster strength here. And this is a Conference USA team that is coming into the AAC, and they are number four in the conference in roster strength, number five on offense, number six on defense. This team is pretty good, right? <laughs> like, they, they are kind of built. Uh, number one in the country in defensive returning production. Of course, you see all that red and orange on the screen. They were number 98 in PPA per drive on defense. They were number 81 in rushing success allowed, number 116 in passing success. So not great, but they they do have a lot of experience, and they are bringing in, of course, a new coaching staff, so that's going to be interesting. Starting on offense, uh, Charlie Fry, he was the OC at Central Michigan back in 2019 and 2020, and then he went to join the Miami Dolphins as their quarterback's coach uh, after that. The quarterback, Casey Thompson, transfers in from Nebraska. He should be an upgrade over Nikosi Perry. Uh, even though the PPA numbers were really good on that offense last year, Casey Thompson, I would think, uh, should be a little bit better. Running back Larry McCammon is back. Uh, along with the offensive line, they returned 62% of the snaps. Talent is top half of the league. I just brought that up. So the issue is, can Charlie Fry get the new, uh, you know, can he get things Things clicking. Can he get some of the new guys clicking with uh, with some of those vets? Over on to the defense. Rock Bellantoni, well-traveled defensive coordinator. He was most recently the edge coach at Auburn. Uh, 18 of the top 21 tacklers are back for FAU. Uh, it's the most returning defensive experience in the country, uh, but they weren't good last year. So is this uh, progression or is this... Uh, you're just bringing in the same garbage that you had. We'll see. Maybe with a new coach, they could be better, and it's at least guys that have been there before. Uh, they're expected to start two transfers. You got uh, Ambush at linebacker, Morris at cornerback, but defensive roster is number six in the conference, so obviously we'll see. Uh, they had very little luck last season. They were number 20 in turnover margin, number 67 in penalties per game as far as injuries and the other team making unexpected field goals, etc. They were number 117 in the luck rank in the country, uh, which you can see. They went 5-7. and seven. They were expected to go 7-5 and five based on all the stats of the season. So uh, the keys to the season here. They are projected favorites in seven games. Uh, their win total sits at 7.5 at plus 850 uh, to win the conference. They are minus 105 to go over. Minus 125 to go under. Uh, keys to the season. My question was, how did this team lose to Purdue and Western Kentucky last year? Uh, they, they should have made a bowl game. Uh, they need to stay healthy this year. Depth is a little bit of a concern uh, at, a, at a majority of the positions, but the starters are really talented. Tom Herman, 
I think he is an upgrade uh, over Willie Taggart. He knows how to coach. He seems to be growing a culture there. Uh, this looks like a fun place to go play right now. Um, the schedule is awesome, right? Absolutely awesome. Uh, weeks, you know, three and four, that's going to be difficult because you go to Clemson, you go to Illinois back-to-back. Yeah, that's going to be tough. But then you get a bye week in week five before you start uh, AAC play. Yeah, uh, conference road games couldn't be better this year. Uh, they've got at South Florida, at Charlotte, at UAB, at Rice. And then at home, you get Tulane at home, you get East Carolina at home, you get UTSA at home, and you get Tulsa at home. This schedule set up brilliantly. So I've, I've got them going 8-4. and four. I think the ceiling for this team could really be 10-2. and two. Uh, But the floor, however, could not make a bowl game again. I I think that's a legitimate concern because some of these games that I've got as wins, you could easily lose those along with the other ones. So five and seven is the floor here. Uh, I like FAU this season. I like them. I I think Tom Herman is going to do big things there. And then we'll see how long he stays. We shall see. The Memphis Tigers. Moving along, Ryan Silverfield seven and six last year and and the way that you know people talk about this team you would think that they have really done some big things but eh maybe not so much let's uh let's move on over to it post game win expectancy was 6.64 and 5.36 so they went six and six in the regular season won a, a big blowout bowl game uh they were expected to go seven and five in the regular season because of that 6.64 you round up etc you get the point Returning production, number 66 in the country, number 53 on offense, number 85 on defense. Uh, Talent-wise, roster strength, they're number five in the conference, number four on offense, number four on defense. They lose some big-name pieces, right? Eddie Lewis, the wide receiver, the tight end, Caden Prescorn, the running back, Asa Martin. However, they do bring in Blake Watson. They do bring in Toski Dove, the wide receiver from Missouri. Uh, Blake Watson is from Old Dominion here. Let's start off with the offense, okay? Uh, offense was pretty good in spots last season. Seth Hennigan is back. Tim Cramsey back. Uh, they lost their top five wide receivers. Can they replace those skill position players? Uh, they weren't super explosive last year, number 84 in offensive explosive rate. Uh, and the offense was not amazing. Uh, Blake Watson came in from Old Dominion. He was awesome at ODU for Ricky, Ronnie, and Bunch. Uh can he help the running game, along with having 64% of the returning offensive line snaps back? Uh, we'll see. The The pieces are there. Uh, as far as defense goes, Matt Barnes returns as defense coordinator. Secondary was not good at all. Number 97, PPA per pass allowed. The defensive line was able to stop the run. They were number 30 in PPA per rush. But they lost, you know, five of the top nine uh, tackles for loss getters however you want to call that. <laughs> they brought in multiple B5 transfers on defense. The, the talent is on the roster. Can Barnes get everyone to gel in his 4-3 defense in year two? Uh, that's the question for the defense. They were number 119 in the country in luck rank last year. Again, that is uh, the typical, did the other team make an unexpected uh, field goal? Did some other team convert uh, fourth down for a touchdown when you didn't expect it? You know, all that kind of stuff, right? So they uh, their luck was not great last year. Uh, but as far as fundamentals go, number 26 in turnover margin, number 9 in penalties per game, pretty good there. They are projected favorites in 10 games this year against this schedule. Not bad. Uh, but I personally have seen this team underperform before, so uh, we'll look at it. Keys to the season here. It's a make-or-break year for Silverfield, I think. he's He's made a bowl in all three years as head coach. Uh, but he's 21 and 15 in three seasons. Norvell was 38 and 15 in four seasons. So, yeah. Uh, and don't get me wrong. I mean, his first year was that that COVID season. So obviously, uh, it's been a bit of a climb. But the football program not quite at the same level that it was under Mike Norvell. So you're hoping that this season is a chance to get back to that. Uh, the turnover margin penalties. I talked about that. Um, even with that, even with the fundamentals, they still only won six games. How does that happen? Uh, they need the incoming skill players to really click with Hennigan immediately because you're going to need this offense to do big things. That's the key to the season here. I've got this team going eight and four, so over the seven and a half, which 
Seven and a half is the win total juiced at minus 160 to go over. It is plus 130 to go under over at BetUS. Um, plus 450 to win the conference. Uh, the schedule sets up really nicely, right? You got Bethune Cookman open at Arkansas State, so you got to go to Jonesboro. Navy comes in on a short week. That one's tricky. Uh, then you get Missouri in St. Louis. You get Boise State at home on Saturday, September 30th. That's week five. You get a bye week, and then you get Tulane at home. You get at UAB, at North Texas, uh, USF, at Charlotte, SMU, and at Temple. I think this team is good enough to beat the best teams in the AAC. I think they are good enough to beat Boise State. I think they are also uh, mid enough, I think uh, is what one of my one of my kids call it. Uh, mid. <laughs> they, they are mid, so they could also lose to Navy and at North Texas and at Temple. So I expect some crazy results from this team this year, but I've got them going eight and four. The ceiling for this team, I've got 10 and two. The floor, I've got five and seven. And I would almost guarantee that a change would be made if this team does not go bowling again. I will say that. All right, moving right along. And we are moving over to Navy, the midshipmen. And who new head coach, Brian Newberry. Uh, interesting. Interesting, right? Uh, they went 4-8 and eight last year, but their post-game win expectancy, whew, you're going to love this one, uh, 7.98 and 4.02. Yeah, they were expected to win eight games. They only won four. So Ken Niamatololo was shown the door. Brian Newberry, the defensive coordinator, was hired, which seems a little strange. Um but hey, I, I've seen weirder, I guess. So, returning production, they're number 43 in the country, number 65 on offense, number 35 on defense. Uh, they were 7-5 and five against the spread last season. Just to let you know, this team was, uh, I believe, what they call a wagon at the end of the year. They were covering everything. So, they bring in new offensive coordinator, Grant Chestnut. They've got P.J. Volker as the defensive coordinator. Uh, they were number one in penalties per game, number 45 in turnover margin. This team was pretty good. Uh, their luck rank was terrible. Um, let's let's start on offense. Let's start with the offense, okay? Grant Chestnut was at Kennesaw. He showed kind of more passing concepts in the triple that they run there. Uh, so that's why Brian Newberry brings him in. They're still running the triple. Uh, the quarterbacks, Ty Lavatai and Xavier Arline, they're battling with Blake Horvath for the starting job. They had injuries in spring and whatnot. Um, I've, I realized this today that Ivan Jasper is still the quarterback's coach. In 2021, this became a huge thing because they forced Kenny Amatalola to fire Jasper as the offensive coordinator, and then after two days, he was reinstated as the quarterback's coach. So then they hire Newberry as the new head coach after firing Niamatalola at the end of 2022. And I just realized that Jasper is still the quarterback's coach. So they didn't fire him along with Niamatalola. I don't get it. I don't understand it. But we'll see, right? I mean, this team, a lot of, uh, they've got a lot of experience. We'll just say that. We'll just say that. Uh, the offensive line returned 64% of the snaps, but only returning 42% of their wide receiver targets. So if there is a new offensive philosophy, it's going to require some new skill guys to step up. They're going to need some new guys to be able to make some plays. We'll see. Who knows? On defense, secondary was awful. Number 130 in uh, in PPA per pass allowed. Number 132 in pass explosiveness allowed. Um, and now they lose John Marshall, the leader in pressures, sacks, and tackles for loss. Uh, can the run defense be as good as they were last year? They were number 10 in the country in rushing success allowed. Uh, they're going to need the secondary to force more runs, for sure. you got to find a way to stop teams from uh, from throwing the ball on you. And maybe you can do that. We'll see. Uh, the team went 11-23 and 23 over the last three seasons, but they were 19-15 and 15 against the spread. So they were competitive, but they lost way more than they than they used to, right? Uh I, I put on here, can Gleaton be more successful at quarterback than Lavatai? It's because I started my notes early, and Lavatai was coming off of an injury. Uh, our line, didn't, we didn't know if he was going to play. Horvath, I mean, who knew? So it looked like Gleaton was probably going to be the guy, but regardless. 
Uh, defense has got to get stops. They were number 113 in the country in fourth down conversions allowed, number 59 in points per scoring opportunity. You got to get stops. This team's win total is sitting at six and a half, and it is plus 115 to go over, minus 145 to go under. They are projected favorites by me, just my numbers, in only three games. Make this make sense to me. Uh, I've got seven toss-ups here. That those are all spreads that are within one score, but this schedule looks difficult. I, I just I'm not sure that I fully get what's happening here. And so, so we'll see. Uh, but I, yeah, I'm going under on this one. I, I've got them. I've got them at four and eight. Um, their ceiling, I think, is eight and four. So that's good. But I think the floor is probably three and nine. Uh, you've got Wagner on the schedule. You got uh, you got some of these CUSA teams that are coming in, right? UAB uh, at Charlotte, North Texas, uh, but it's still difficult. It's still a very difficult schedule, and I don't know that I trust Newberry as a first time head coach coming in. Um, we'll see. I don't know. So Navy, yeah, I've got it four and eight. I like the team. I like the uh, the returning experience and whatnot, but that schedule's still tough, and this team has not figured out how to win yet. And I don't know that a first-year head coach is going to be able to show them that. So we'll see. We'll pay attention. We'll see what's going on. All right. Moving along. North Texas. The mean green. Of course, Eric Morris is the new head coach here. And we'll go on and pull it up on the screen here in a second. But they went 7-7 seven and seven last year. Made a conference title game, lost it, lost the bowl game. <sighs> and, of course, Seth Luttrell had to be let go. That's the way it goes, I guess, uh, when you expect a whole lot from your football program. He set those expectations. He couldn't live up to them. It's the way it goes. So, last year, their postgame win expectancy in the regular season, 6.47 and 6.53. Uh, that includes that 13th Conference USA title game that they lost to UTSA. They were 6-2 and two in the conference last year, uh, but only 7-5 and five overall. Just to give you a bit of an idea. Number 82 in returning production, number 63 on offense, number 101 on defense. Eric Morris uh, was at Washington State as the offensive coordinator. He brought Cam Ward over. Before that, he was at Incarnate Word as the head coach there. Uh, the offense that he likes to run is pass-heavy. He runs fast. We'll see what happens. Jordan Davis is the offensive coordinator here. Um, let's, let's start off with this. We'll start with the offense, Okay. Rushing success was awful, but number 13 in rushing explosiveness last year, so that's good. Uh, they were number 112 in rush success. Just putrid. Louisiana Monroe transfer quarterback Chandler Rogers comes in. He looks to be the starter. Um, the offensive line was fifth in the country in sacks allowed. They only lose the center this year, which is a huge, huge part but they did bring in Ethan Miner, who started 12 games at center at Arkansas State. So you do have some experience here. I like the pieces that they've got on offense. I think this could be good. Roscar Attaway, the second, is, of course, the running back here. Um, wide receiver Roderick Burns is back. I, I think they've got some... They lost some dudes to transfer, but I think they got some guys on offense. I think they'll they'll certainly be fun to watch. We'll say that. All right, moving along to defense. Matt Capone, former Iowa State cornerback coach for the last four years. Now he's leading his own defense, of course, down here in uh, in Denton, Texas. Defense was number 119 points per scoring opportunity and number 120 in third down conversion percentage. You got to get stops. Got to get stops. Now this is a whole new defense. Again, number 101 in returning production or adjusted returning production. The new D.C. knows defensive backs. There is talent in the secondary. You got the cornerback, uh, Tashada there. Uh, defensive line is still an issue, though. They were number 127 in stuff rate, number 130 in offensive line yards allowed. Uh, they got a lot of upperclassmen. There's only one sophomore that's expected to start. Everybody else is juniors and seniors. But, eh. I mean, what are, what are we looking at? They're projected favorites in six games. I've got them in seven toss-ups that's... Projected spreads within a, a touchdown or so. 
we're going to expect the offense to score under Morse. These are the keys to the season, by the way. But can the defense get stops? They averaged giving up 43.6 points per game and seven losses in 2022. They were 7-0 and when they gave up 28 points or less. So I think we have a number here. Watch how many times the opponent scores 28 points. Uh, the late schedule does them no favors. You look at weeks 8 through 11, I mean, that is just brutal. Um, they got to close their last three on the road. It's just not great. The question here, can they win road games? That's going to be a big piece of this. Uh, number eight, or weeks eight through 11 is at Tulane, Memphis, UTSA, and at SMU. Absolutely brutal. And then to close out the season, you got at Tulsa and at UAB. Not expected to be good teams, but you got to go on the road for the last three weeks of the year. It's not good. Not good. Turnovers need to be fixed. They were number 112 in the country in turnover margin last year. Uh, penalties per game, though, number 36. That's not bad. Uh, you look at the quarterback that they brought in, Rodgers only threw interceptions on 2.2% of his passes. Austin Awney was 3.6. I feel like that's a pretty big difference. Um, I think Rodgers not going to take as many chances, but we'll see. We'll see. It's a new head coach, new quarterback, new everything. I've got the team at 5-7, and seven, so I've got them going under the win total, which is 6.5, juiced at minus 155 to the under. It's plus 125 if you wanted to go over that. Uh, but I've got them at five and seven on this. I that schedule looks brutal to me, and so not a not a huge fan with the way it was set up. The ceiling for the team, if the offense is clicking and the defense is able to do anything, I could see them going eight and four. The floor for the team, I think, is probably four and eight. They're going to be able to get some wins because they're going to outscore some people. But uh, this could be a situation much like Louisiana Tech had last year with Sonny Cumbie. Uh, where the offense was great, but the defense was just bleh. So when you get into shootouts, it's a coin flip. It's an absolute coin flip. I like Eric Morris. I think this could be a lot of fun for them. Um, we'll see. We'll see. But 5-7 and seven for North Texas is what I've got on that one. Moving along. The Rice Owls. And Mike Bloomgren. Headed back again, another season in Houston. Post-game win expectancy last year was 5.18 and 6.82, and yet they went 5-7 and seven and made a bowl game. That's right. Cheers to having good grades. I think that's what we can take away from this, right? 3-5 and five in the conference last year. Uh, they're number 63 in the country in returning production, adjusted returning production, number 85 on offense, number 42 on defense. The offense... Their roster strength is number seven in the conference, number 83 nationally. Now, the defense, not great. Not great. But uh, there's there's some questions about the offense that I think they can, uh, they can maybe uh, look pretty good this year. Obviously, we'll have to see. Um, let's, let's start off and look at this. Uh, you know, we'll start with the offense. How's that? Start with the offense. It wasn't the problem for this team last year until the last three weeks of the season when they played against Western Kentucky, UTSA, and North Texas. Uh, JT Daniels comes in. If he's healthy, uh, he should be an upgrade over TJ McMahon, uh, who transferred out this year, right? Uh, they do lose Bradley Rosner. They lose the running back Cam Mart, uh, excuse me, Cameron Montgomery. Uh, that's a bit of an issue for this team. They were number 18 in luck rank last year. Uh, but number 130 in turnover margin, number 63 in penalties per game. The offensive line returns 64% of their snaps, but they're losing three really experienced players that played multiple positions. Uh, the wide receivers and tight ends are vets, but are any of them playmakers? That's going to be an issue. I'm interested to see Luke McCaffrey with JT Daniels, if Daniels gets the starting job. I'm I'm curious about this team. I'm very curious. Uh, moving over to the defense, quality depth throughout the line. You watch for the defensive end, uh, Coleman Coco. He's a transfer from Colgate. Uh, their leading tackler, linebacker, Chris Conti. He's back with Myron Morrison. And then they finished second in Conference USA in pass defense. They returned both cornerbacks and their safety, Gabe Taylor, who is an absolute ball hawk. So the defense, for as bad as the numbers were last year, you look at some of the pieces that they've got, and they could be very interesting. I'm, I'm interested to see what this team is going to do. Uh, they're only projected favorites in two games, and yet their win total is four and a half. So here's the deal. Um, 
it's just the same, both over and under. Minus 115 on both sides. Here's the keys to the season. They got to stay healthy. Their starting talent could easily make a bowl game. Uh, they got to fix the turnover issues, and maybe just swapping out quarterbacks can help that, uh, along with cleaning up penalties. Although, you know, the penalties were okay, number 63 in the country uh, in penalties per game. The schedule is a step up, but they get three former CUSA schools. Um, I don't like the schedule. They open at Texas, they play Houston, then you got Texas Southern, but then you got to go on the road to Tampa against South Florida, who is, they look to be rejuvenated quite a bit. You get East Carolina at home. You get a pretty good UConn team at home. Like this is this is a rough, rough schedule. Uh, you get your home games towards the end of the season: Tulane, SMU, Charlotte, Florida Atlantic, and that comes with at Tulsa and at UTSA. I've got to go under here. I, I understand they're bringing in JT Daniels. It feels like they kind of got over the hump by going five and eight last year, but I just. I can't see Rice getting there, especially with a step up in competition. Uh, the ceiling for this team, I've got them at 6-6. Six and six. I think maybe they could make a bowl game. Maybe. Uh, but the floor for the team, I think, could be 1-11. Uh, if you get some of these guys hurt, that's going to be serious. Uh, so I'm I'm curious about it. We'll we'll see what ends up happening. But, whew, that's... Uh, I just don't see the four and a half. I don't see them hitting five wins. It doesn't make sense to me. All right. On the other side, we are starting off with SMU, but we got seven more American Conference teams to jump into. Let's check out some things you should know about. Every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, expert game analysis only on the BetUS TV College football channel. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or whatever's your favorite podcast app. And if your app allows it, leave a five-star written review. Visit the Winning Cures Everything web store to get all kinds of football shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and more. Visit winningcureseverything.com slash store to see what all we've added. And now, back to the show. All right. SMU. Right down our times here, of course. And SMU, of course, Rhett Lashley, he has overhauled this roster, bringing in a ton of P5 talent. Uh, and now SMU looks to be the next team to step up now that Cincy and Houston and UCF have left the conference. There's a ton of talent in that Dallas area. So let's go on and bring it up on the screen. Seven and six last year. Probably should have been a little bit better. Um, but yes, uh, seven and six. Their post game win expectancy was six point oh nine and five point nine one. Everybody remembers the Hail Mary against Louisiana Tech last year, of course. Uh, and now Tanner Mordecai gone, vamos, headed to Wisconsin to team up with Phil Longo and Luke Fickle over there. But um, you're losing some running backs. You're losing the wide receiver uh, Rasheed Rice. Uh, you lose Jimmy Phillips, uh, the linebacker. You lose it, your top three linebackers here. I mean, it's it's just nuts. However, they their schedule lightens up, and they have got some serious talent here. So, looking at the talent, uh, looking at returning production, number 51 in adjusted returning production, number 89 on offense, number 24 on defense, uh, but as far as roster strength is concerned, they're number three overall in the conference, number two on offense, number one on defense. Now, defense, not exactly known for producing NFL talent uh, at SMU, but regardless, they do have a lot of dudes that might be able to get some stops this year. So we shall see. Uh, Preston Stone, we'll start on offense. Quarterback Preston Stone takes over for Tanner Mordecai. Stone is talented, only had 58% completions with two touchdowns and one pick uh, on 48 passes in 2022, but he has looked like the real deal in, in camp so far. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. The numbers last year, Brett Lashley knows what he's doing with an offense. Number 21, PPA per drive on offense. Um, they're, they move fast. Number eight in the country in total plays per game. They run a lot of them. And, and they will continue to do so, I would imagine. Number 13 in the country, an offensive uh, explosive play rate. That's awesome. Uh, they, were, they brought in a slew of P5 transfers to bolster the talent. Uh, just, just awesome. They were number two in the country in offensive plays per game. They ran 77.31 offensive plays per game last year. Uh, on defense, 
Scott Simons, the defense coordinator here. Uh, defense, like, Lashley would rather outscore somebody in the 50s than try to play ball control, and we get that. Um, but the question here is, can the defense get that one stop that they need at the end of a game, right? Can can you get one stop that gives your offense a two-touchdown lead instead of just one score, et cetera? Uh, they lost three of their top four tacklers. They returned nearly 72% of their quarterback pressures this year. Even though they were only number 122 in Havoc rate uh, at 13.4%, the question for the defense, can they disrupt the quarterback at all this season? Uh, I think they'll have more opportunities to. We'll see. Uh, they're projected favorites in nine games. Their win total sits at eight. To go over is minus 165. To go under is plus 135. They are plus 500 to win the conference this year. They're Look, let's, let's talk about keys to the season here. Their luck rank was number 77, but they were number four in the country in fourth down attempts per game. Are they going to continue to be as aggressive with a new starter at quarterback and with two transfer starting offensive linemen? I don't know the answer to that question, so that's why it's a key to the season. It's a question. Uh, they were fantastic on penalties per game, number six in the country, but number 59 in the country in giveaways per game is... Can Lashley's offense clean that part up? And can the defense force some more turnovers? They're going to need that. Uh, their non-conference schedule, pretty difficult. They got at Oklahoma, at TCU this year. The conference schedule eased up significantly. This is. Let me read off their conference schedule really quick just to give you an idea. They play Charlotte. They got a bye week. Then they play at East Carolina, at Temple, Tulsa, at Rice, North Texas, at Memphis, and Navy. That's nuts. That schedule is is pretty awesome. Um, I've got them winning nine games this year. I've got a loss at Oklahoma, at TCU, and at Memphis. Uh, but that's only one loss in conference. So I think they're going to be in the conference title game this year. Uh, the ceiling for this team, I, I could see it being 10-2, and two, right? I could absolutely see 10-2. and two. Uh, The floor for the team, I think, is probably 7-5 and five because there's so much talent on this team and that schedule is set up so well that they're going to get to at least seven wins. I would almost guarantee that. But I've got them at 9-3. and three. I think Rhett Lashley is doing good things. Um, man, they were so excited about maybe getting to the Pac-12. Uh, but we'll see what ends up happening with them. I mean, this is a big-time program that's sitting in the American Athletic Conference. Uh, I like SMU. I, I like them to go over the 8 win total here. Next up, South Florida. The Bulls. New head coach Alex Golesh. And look, and I hope I say that right, Golesh. I think that's right. Uh, but this team was has been putrid for a long, long time. And now, uh, from all indications, that culture change down there has been uh, quite the revamp. I will say that. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of what they're doing already. So let's dive into it. 3.19 and 8.81 last season. Uh, and yet they went 1-11. Like, there's a reason why Scott was fired. I mean, it's just nuts. Um, let's let's just start off with that. They didn't win a single game in conference last year. Let's just start with the returning production, number 93 in the country, uh, number 113 on offense, number 43 on defense, and that defense was huh, awful. I mean, just awful. Uh, not good at all. Uh, number 131, PPA per drive on on defense. Uh, so PPA per drive allowed, whatever. Moving over to the offense. Let's start on the offense here. Golesh said that the running back unit is the strength of the team. They've got ex-Florida running back Naquan Wright, along with ex-North Dakota State running back Dominic Gunella added. Uh, you're also, you know, the, you lose Brian Batie. He heads over to, I think, Auburn. Uh, but you, you got some dudes there. You got dudes. The quarterback battle between Bohannon Brown and the Coastal Carolina backup Bryce Archie. That's going to be interesting to watch. I think Bohannon is going to win that thing. Uh, but the other guys are actually showing out in camp right now. Offensive line, they brought in four talented transfers. The wide receiver, they got tons of P5 transfers there uh, as well. I, I think that the offense could be really good this year. I think they could be really good, especially if Golesh brings in that, that same hypo offense. We'll, we'll see what happens here. We'll see what happens. So, uh, on defense, Todd Orlando is the new defensive coordinator. You know his name. You know who that guy is. Uh, lots of experience coming back. Again, number 43 in adjusted returning production on defense. 
Uh, defensive ends, Vaughn and Logan, they returned with the defensive tackle Cheney. They brought in multiple P5 transfers uh, for some pretty good depth on that defensive line. The linebacker unit, they got multiple guys back. That includes DJ Gordon the fourth, and the secondary is almost completely intact, but man, they were awful. Number 130 in passing success rate. So, uh, this team probably going to have to outscore some other teams uh, this year. They are projected favorites in five games. Their win total sits at four. So, four wins is the win total for this team. To go over is minus 125. To go under is minus 105 over at BetUS. To win the conference, they're plus 4,800, which is a little shorter than I thought it would be. Uh, I've got them going five and seven. I, I believe in what they're doing. I believe in a, a senior quarterback that's been there for a long time. I believe in uh, some of these guys that they've added. They went 4-29 and 29 over the last three seasons. Only one of those wins was against an FBS team. you got to turn over a lot of losing here, but I think they can do it with this schedule. Uh, they've got a lot of transfers coming in for depth or, or potentially starting this year. You're going to need them to gel quickly. I think Golesh's offense is easy enough to learn that they can get out there and feel comfortable and just go play. So I think they've got some talent. Uh, on, on defense, they're number five as far as roster strength. On offense, they're number nine, but I think it could go higher than that. Uh, we'll see. We'll obviously see. Uh, the question, the key to the season is Bohannon staying healthy, I think. Uh, this team is talented enough with a favorable schedule to potentially go bowling. Like, it, I, I think they've got a real shot here. And so, uh, you know, you turn that game at UConn into a win, or maybe you beat Florida Atlantic or at UAB, I could see them maybe getting to six wins. Um, we'll see about Alex Golesh, right? That first time head coach, this one's going to be very interesting. This is a team that is used to losing. Uh, you know the old cliche of uh, lose big, then lose small, then win small, then win big. That's what you're trying to do as you progress with the team. But I think this team has lost big for a long time. Uh, I think I think they could flip this thing around because they got the talent to be able to do so. So we shall see. All right, moving on, the Temple Owls and Stan Drayton. I like what he's doing here too. I mean, this is I I love these AAC teams that are that are rebuilding constantly. Right, pull up on the screen, four point eight three and seven point one seven was the projected uh, uh, or post game win expectancy last year, and yet they only went three and nine. That let's. Let's do this. Let's talk uh, returning production. They're number 17 in the country in adjusted returning production. That's number one in the conference. Um, as far as their offense goes, number 33. Defense, number 11. Uh, their roster strength is actually, you know, middle of the road in the conference. Number 10 uh, overall, number 8 on offense, number 7 on defense. Let's talk about the offense here. We'll start with that. E.J. Warner, Kurt Son, he's back after 3,000-plus yards in 10 starts. He had 18 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Obviously, you want to clean up the interceptions, and they've been working on that this year, from what I understand. Um, running backs and offensive line need to improve. Uh, they're number 130 in PPA per rush, number 129 in offensive line guards last year. So, obviously, you need that offensive line to start getting a push. They return four starters, and they do bring in a Juco transfer, uh, the left tackle, Barajas. Uh, he joins. Can they be better in run blocking? Because you're going to need to. You can't put everything on EJ Warner and expect him not to throw some interceptions here. They do have options at tight end, but they are going to need a wide receiver to emerge. Big time. Big time. On defense, Everett Withers, the defense coordinator, linebacker unit, they do have future pros here. Uh, McGee, Rigby, Jordan, et cetera, the secondary, they are experienced uh, you got cornerbacks McMurray and Hill are back, along with the safety Odom and Daraville. Uh, and you got two big time transfers coming in as well. The defensive line has three guys with experience, but you know, they're adding Hay from Miami and Miles from Georgia Tech, and that helps tremendously. The secondary, number 41 in PPA per pass uh last year, but number 78 in pass success allowed. So, you know, they did a good job of keeping people out of the end zone, but People just drove it down the field on them routinely. It let's They're projected favorites in three games, so this schedule is pretty difficult. But I got a lot of faith in, in what they're doing here. Let's talk about keys to the season. Uh, the culture under Drayton, 
is worlds better. It, it, this program is on the rise. They need some health luck. Depth is still an issue here. Uh, they need to stay explosive. They were number 30 uh, on offensive explosiveness and number 35 at preventing uh, explosive plays last year. Uh, the defense does look better this year than they did last year. So that's a step in the right direction. Um, they got to fix the turnover problem. They were num- number 126 in turnover margin last year. Uh, we've seen in, in camp and over the summer, EJ Warner has been working on uh, on that turnover issue. So obviously we'll see. October, that's their toughest stretch here. Um, if they can win one of those in October before they get to that uh, bye week, uh, the week of Halloween or whatever, that's going to be interesting uh, because they've got UTSA at North Texas and SMU. And then after that, they close out Navy at USF, at UAB, and Memphis. You could win some of those. Uh, but that that stretch in October, that one's going to be, that's going to be interesting. So they, that would almost guarantee them going to a bowl game if they win one of those games in October. Uh, I've got them going 6-6. Six and six. Their win total, is sit, it sits at 5. To go over is juiced at minus 150. To go under is 120. Uh, again, the line over at BetUS. The ceiling for this team, I think, is 8-4. and four. I think if Warner is really, really slinging the ball, they could be really good. Uh, I think the floor for the team, however, probably what it was this past year at three and nine. Like there's talent there. I think they got some dudes. Man, you have one injury pop up and it could derail this whole thing. It could really get crazy. So uh, let's let's see what ends up happening. But uh, but I do like Temple. So I've got them six and six. I got them going bowling. I think that'd be a huge step up for Stan Drayton. Uh, because last year, I, nobody knew what to expect from this, but he really got them believing last year. And that team started to look better and better. I expect big things this season. All right, moving right along. The Tulane Green Wave. And you guys know how much I love Willie Fritz. Y'all ought to know it by now. Uh, but last year, I mean, four and two in one-score games, uh they there were there were forces at play. I will say that. Nine point three one and three point six nine in post game win expectancy. Uh they went ten and two in the regular season, twelve and two overall. They won the conference title game. They won the Cotton Bowl against USC. Big time stuff. Seven and one in the conference. However, uh they lost to Southern Miss last year. They beat Kansas State, but they lost to Southern Miss. That's the way it goes. Will Hall, he'll do that to you. This team is number 81 in adjusted returning production, number 46 on offense, number 110 on defense. Uh, And that defense was pretty good last year. Pretty good. Number uh, 44, PPA per drive on defense, number 31, PPA per drive on offense. Pretty balanced overall. Uh, Roster strength, the number two in the conference, number three, on offense, number three on defense. Um, but, man, number 110 adjusted returning production on defense, that's going to be interesting, especially considering they have swapped out defensive coordinators. Uh, it feels like a ton, right? So new offensive coordinator, Slade Nagel. New defensive coordinator, Sheil Woods, comes over from Troy. Sheil Wood, excuse me. Um, he replaces Chris Hampton, uh, who went over to Oregon. Of course, they had Lance Gidry in there for a cup of coffee, and then Gidry went over to Miami. Uh, is what it is. So let's start on offense. Tajay Spears is gone. Not going to have that. But they do get the quarterback, Michael Pratt, back, along with four offensive line starters. They lost their two top wide receivers. Uh, can they have playmakers emerge from the guys that they've got right now? Uh, Jaquan Jackson, I think, could be really, really good at, uh, for them this year. Their center, Sincere Hainsworth, I think is a massive, massive piece of the puzzle. Uh, so they got pieces on offense. They could be really, really good again in Willie Fritz's offense. Uh, they ran the ball 54% of the time. That was number 33 in the FBS last year. Is that number going to change uh, with having a different running back in? Uh, Clayton Johnson is is expected to be the, the running back this year. Pratt only passed on 40% of his snaps last year. So... We'll see. Like I, he is somebody that is hyped up as being a potential NFL pick. Uh, who knows? Uh, who knows at this point? On defense, the top two tacklers are gone, but the defensive line should still be solid. Uh, they're led by you know the studs Hodges and Jenkins. They they were much better against the pass than the run last year. Um, 
number 63 PPA per rush, even though they were number, uh, let's see, uh, number 56 in rushing success rate. So that is what it is. The question for me is, can the secondary continue their improvement with three starting transfers? We'll see. We'll see. They, they got some things to do there. They got some work. This team was number six in the country in penalties per game, number 42 in turnover margin, but their luck rank, you know, I was talking about Memphis and some of these others having a bad uh, luck rank last year. Tulane was number six. The ball seemed to bounce their way uh, a lot last year. Uh, they are projected favorites in 11 games, so that's going to be interesting. Uh, their win total sits at 9.5. It is plus 110 to go over and minus 140 to go under. Let's talk keys to the season. They need playmakers to emerge badly. The quarterback, Pratt, is back, and they do have an experienced offensive line. They need skilled talent to show up and score points. The depth could be more of an issue than it was last season, although the schedule does set up nicely. They have five games against former CUSA teams. So, uh, look rank penalties per game and number 22 in giveaways per game, all of that likely to regress to the mean. They're projected favorites in 11 games, but I have got them going 9-3 and three this year. So I've got them going under, and I know that's juiced at minus 140, uh, but you could absolutely see losses at Memphis and against UTSA or at Florida Atlantic or at East Carolina, something along those lines. Uh, could they lose to Ole Miss? Yes. They could also lose to South Alabama at home in week one. That's a team that returns a bunch. This is an interesting spot for Tulane. Uh, can they keep it going after winning the AAC last year and winning a Cotton Bowl? Who's to say? I think the ceiling for the team is absolutely like 11-1. and one, But I also think that the floor for this team is probably 7-5. and five. So that's going to be um, that's going to be interesting. We'll see what happens. So I uh, I like this team. I don't think they're going to be as good as last year. Uh, Tajay Spears was the dude, but it is what it is. Moving right along, and we are going to jump to the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, and they got a new head coach, Kevin Wilson who can absolutely coach if you forget about all that stuff that happened at Indiana, right? And we're not going to talk about that here. We're just talking ball right here. But this seemed like an interesting fit. I, I don't know what to think about uh, about old Tulsa on this one. Um, we'll just pull it up. Let's look at some numbers. So they went 5-7 and seven last year. Their postgame win expectancy was 5.39 and 6.61. Philip Montgomery, the former head coach, is now over at Auburn. And that's going to be interesting. So, uh, they lose quite a few pieces. I mean, quite a few pieces. So, that's going to be uh, tricky to keep up with here. Uh, because I am... I ain't sold on exactly what this team is building currently. But we'll we'll get there. Let's start on offense, okay? Okay. Uh, Let's start on offense. They are number 123 in returning adjusted production on offense, number 114 on defense. But Braylon Braxton comes in. Davis Brand is gone. He's gone to Georgia Southern. Braylon Braxton, um, with Kevin Wilson and Steve Spurrier Jr. drawing up plays, like this could be absolutely nuts. It could be crazy. Uh, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think Braxton was awesome last year. Uh, there's not a lot of running back experience, but they do get uh, Oklahoma State transfer Braylon Presley to join the team. He should be a lot of fun. I got no idea what to expect from the wide receiver core. They don't have a lot back. The interior line uh, returns on, on offense, but the two tackles transferred out. They're going to need new guys to step up there. Uh, they're number 12 in roster strength on defense, number 10 on offense as far as uh, conference rank is concerned. Um Let's let's talk about the defense. I think the offense is going to be fine. Steve Spurrier Jr. calling plays for Kevin Wilson with a talent like Braxton. So long as he stays healthy, they should be fine. Let's talk about defense. Defensive line does look to be more experienced this year. They got the uh, defensive end Ostrowski and Malone, along with you know several talented defensive tackles here. The linebacker unit though has almost no experience. That's a massive concern here. Uh, the secondary has the most vets of any position group on the team. They got three power five transfers. 
uh, to join the cornerback Carlisle, and they got two returning safeties as well. They got to be able to stop big plays. They were number 103 in explosive play rate allowed last year. Uh, I think Chris Polizzi, the defensive coordinator, is. I think he'll be able to do that. Um, part of it's going to be whether or not um, Kevin Wilson slows down on offense a little bit. Right, Philip Montgomery loved to play fast. They were number 35 in total plays per game last year. So, Luck Rank was number 75 last season. Their win total this year is four and a half. They are projected favorites in five games. Uh, but to go over the four and a half, they are minus 120. To go under is minus 110. Plus 3,400 as far as conference odds you know, to win the AAC. Let's talk about some keys to the season with Tulsa. Wilson, he's a really good coach. Really, really good coach. Uh, special teams has been a nightmare for the last two seasons. They got to shore up that facet of the game, fix the turnover issue. They were number 86 in turnover margin last season. Uh, they were number 93 in the country at 1.6 giveaways per game. I think Wilson is going to make sure that they get that cleaned up. Uh, but also, you got a guy that's uh, a bit of a wild card with with the quarterback, uh, quarterback Braxton. Excuse me. I will be able to talk eventually, I swear. Uh, Wilson feels like a weird fit, right? Montgomery was always good at being able to find diamonds in the rough. Our question is, can Wilson do that? I've got this team going 4-8 and eight this year. I think Wilson can eventually build this team to be really good. I don't think he's there right now. I don't think this team is right there right now. Um, it's a big difference to go from coaching at Ohio State to coaching at Tulsa, right? So let's let's see what happens here. I think the ceiling for the team is six and six. I think the floor could even be as low as two and ten, especially if you end up losing Braxton. Um, this team's going to be interesting, interesting to watch. What can Kevin Wilson do? Uh, I like I like Kevin Wilson. I like Tulsa. Uh, this just feels like a bit of a rebuilding season, uh, at least to me, right? The UAB Blazers, and they made one of the weirder coaching hires of the offseason, but uh, this could end up being a very good move, right? Deion Sanders, there's a lot of people that praise that move. Uh, look, I mean, Trent Dilfer has been huge in recruiting circles. Deion Sanders wasn't even that involved with, uh, with the high school stuff, at least not to the level that Dilfer has been. Maybe this is big for UAB. Right now, though, he has zero coaching experience in college. He's only coached in high school, uh, but he is an NFL guy. He, he, we'll see, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Let's look at the numbers. 8.37 and 3.63 last year for their postgame win expectancy, and they went 6-6 six and six in the regular season and had to go play in the Bahamas Bowl. Now, I say had to uh, because the expectations were higher for UAB, but alas, now Brian Vincent is gone. Uh, he was the interim head coach last year after Bill Clark retired the July before unexpectedly. And um, and the quarterback is gone, Dylan Hopkins. Both of them went over to New Mexico. So it's just the way it goes. Uh, Dwayne McBride, the leading rusher in the country, is gone. That's an issue. Uh, they are number 128 in the country in adjusted returning production, number 119 on offense, 131 on defense. They lost a bunch of dudes, but they did bring in some guys. So there's, you know, I think they've got some talent here. Uh, obviously, you look at roster strength, the number eight in the or number eight in the conference in the AAC, number 11 on offense, number 11 on defense. But when you look at overall roster strength, obviously those numbers add up differently. I know some of you are questioning these, but is what it is. Um, let's start off on offense. Offense was great last year. Can't count on those anymore. Jacob Zeno is going to be the dude at quarterback. He was 0-2 as a starter last year, 0-3 in games where he played the majority of the time. Uh, but I don't think that was necessarily his fault because he was he had 721 yards, five touchdowns, and two interceptions. Now, he played pretty well. Landry Liddy comes in from Louisiana Tech as the backup. Uh, the wide receiver core looks loaded. They look like they got dudes. Uh, Jermaine Brown Jr., the running back, he had 900-plus yards, and that was behind McBride, who was the leading rusher. This offensive line was serious last year. However, 
They lose all, all five starters on offensive line. It's just bad. Uh, they also brought in uh, from the JUCO ranks Isaiah Jacob, who is Josh Jacob's brother. So something to pay attention to. On defense, uh, or sorry, on offense, the offensive line is counting on transfers this year. That's always a crapshoot. We'll see what happens with that. But they did lose all five of their starters from the offensive line from last year. Uh, as far as defense goes, the defensive end, Drew Tuazama, he is a stud. Uh, and there's playmakers all along the defensive line here. Uh, the linebacker room looks okay. They got a lot of talent. You got Bratton. You got uh, a Marshall transfer, James Smyer. Um, you, but you got not many snaps. So these dudes look good, but we haven't gotten to see them like in real action yet. Uh, secondary has some experience, but not a ton. Uh, they may count on transfers and freshmen in the secondary. Um, the defense was okay against the pass last year, number 57 in passing success allowed, um, but they were terrible against the run. They were number 124 in PPA per rush uh, in 2022, so that is that's interesting. Um, just just rough. Just rough. I'll say that. All right. Their luck rank was number 118 last year. Obviously, when your postgame win expectancy has you winning 8.37 games and you go 6-6, six and six, obviously something had to go wrong along the way, but it is what it is. Their win total this year sits at 5. Um, to go over is plus 115. To go under is minus 145. They're projected favorites in six games. So... Let's talk about keys to the season. Uh, Dilfer can recruit, but he was a different kind of hire here. Uh, normally, Power 5 teams, schools, are the ones that uh, that bring in guys that can recruit. Uh, not AAC schools or Conference USA schools, right? Uh, this roster does have exciting pieces. Uh, they're middle of the pack, but the schedule is just brutal. Tulane, UTSA, Memphis, and FAU... Now, they do have three former CUSA teams on the schedule, uh, but gracious. I mean, you you get North Texas at home, you get Florida Atlantic at home, uh, and you get at UTSA. This is not great. You, then they got to go to Georgia Southern. They got to play Louisiana at home. Like, this this ain't this ain't great. This ain't easy by any stretch. Uh, can Dilfer clean up the penalty issues? Obviously, number 96 in the country in penalties per game last year. Uh why couldn't this team win when Zeno was in at quarterback last year? That's a big question. Uh, very little returning production. So, I mean, you got to hope that everyone can gel immediately and that they all can stay healthy. That's the biggest thing. My record prediction for this team this year is 4-8. and eight. I think that the ceiling, as far as wins go for this team, is 6-6. Six and six. It's a brutal schedule. Brutal. Uh, I think the floor for the team is probably three and nine. I like Dilfer. Uh, I like him with the media. I wonder if he is cut out for this kind of a coaching job. So we'll have to see. Um, I like UAB. I was always pulling for Bill Clark. I'm going to start out pulling for Trent Dilfer, but who knows? Who knows? We shall see. All right, we got one more. And that would be the UTSA Roadrunners. <laughs> Last team to cover today. And boy, Jeff Trailer, uh, a step up in competition, but the expectations are still at sky high. Look at the numbers here. Their postgame win expectancy last year was 8.93 and 4.07. Uh, they went 10 and 3 in the regular season, if you count the Conference USA title game. Uh, they lost the... Or, sorry, they went 11-2, and two, and then they lost the bowl game. So, 11-2, and two, and yet their postgame win expectancy was under nine wins. So, something to pay attention to. Their luck rank was number 21. Uh, they were number 52 in turnover margin, but their penalties per game was number 109. Yeesh. Yeesh. Not good. Returning production, number 34 in the country, uh, number three in the conference, uh, number 29 on offense, number 61 on defense. They are the number one roster strength in the conference, number 26 in the country. 
Uh, number one on defense, or excuse me, number one on offense, number 24 nationally, uh, and number two on defense, number 47 nationally. Uh, so let's start off with the offense here. The quarterback, Frank Harris, he's back for his seventh season. Of course, God bless NIL for that one. Uh, to lead the number seven PPA per drive offense in FBS again, along with you get the running backs, uh, Barnes, and the wide receivers, Cephas and Clark. Uh, they lost their offensive coordinator for the third straight season. This team was almost perfectly balanced between the run and the pass. Is Justin Burke going to come in and be better than he was in the bowl game? That's a big question. This offense could not figure out how to get past Troy at all. And now that Troy defense coordinator is at Tulane, and they will see each other at the end of the season. So uh, the quarterback, uh, Frank Harris, I, I said seventh season. This dude is absolutely legit. He's the star of the team. Uh, you are going to have to have him stay healthy. It's just period. This team almost relies on it. So uh, as far as defense is concerned, Jess Lepp is the defense coordinator. They were number 128 in explosiveness allowed last year, number 79 in PPA per drive allowed, but they got 70% of their tackles and 80% of their quarterback pressures back. So can they maybe improve a little bit? They were number six in rushing success rate allowed, number 52 in passing success rate allowed, and yet they still gave up a bunch of points. Make that make sense. Uh, opponent upgrades, you know, yeah, oh wait, no, let's not talk about that. Uh let's do um let's do how fast the offense moves. Okay, number 17 in total plays per game. Uh they were number 87 in defensive plays per game. If you maybe cut that down a little bit, maybe this new offense coordinator, Burke, can help out the defense a little bit, play some more complimentary football. Obviously, we'll see. This team is a projected favorite in nine games this year. Um their win total sits at seven and a half. To go over is minus 165. To go under is plus 135. Their conference odds are plus 650. So that's, uh, you know, they're one of the favorites to win this league this year. I'll say that. Let's move to the keys to the season now. Okay. New offense coordinator, but they do have experienced talent everywhere else. Um, will they be as explosive with a new play caller? Like, only 1.43 points per opportunity in the bowl game. So that was not good. Uh, opponent upgrades, not so much. They got four games against former CUSA teams, and they got Temple, ECU, and USF from the AAC. So the schedule for them could not have been better. Uh, there's very little experience behind Harris at quarterback. I brought that up earlier. There's talented depth across the field, but not experienced depth. So that's uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. I got this team going eight and four. I've got them going over the seven and a half here. Uh, there's a reason it's juiced that much, but you know, a ceiling for this team could be ten and two. Everybody stays healthy. Uh, they find a way to win some of those road games. Yeah, you beat Houston first game of the season. Yeah, you could see that happening. I don't know that it's likely, but you could see it. Uh, and then you've got at Tulane. You got at Florida Atlantic. You got at North Texas. There are there are games that you could lose here. As far as the floor goes. You get the wrong injury at the wrong time, I could absolutely see six and six for this team. So that wouldn't be great. I'm not predicting it, but I think eight and four, I've got two losses in conference. This team could be playing for a conference title in their first year in the AAC. I could absolutely see that. So we'll uh we'll watch this team. I love UTSA, Meep Meep, of course. Uh, but eight and four, I don't think is a bad first season in the American Athletic Conference. Uh I'm I'm curious. All these teams make me curious this year. <laughs> I'll admit that. All right. It's time for us to get out of here. The AAC, I am going to predict. Uh, I'm going to predict UTSA and SMU playing for the conference title. And I'll predict SMU to win the AAC this year. They haven't done it in a very long time. That doesn't mean that they can't do it, uh, but that's who I'm going to take to win it this year. So SMU over UTSA in the conference title game. Should be fun. We'll see. You guys can come back and rag me if I get it wrong, obviously. But uh, but that's the way it goes. All right, go to winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe if you have not subscribed on YouTube, on your favorite podcast app. Click that like button, of course, and leave your comments. 
I would love to hear from you. Again, I'm going to be in Bet Bash this week. I'm going to be in Las Vegas. Come out and say hello. Reach out to me at Gary WCE on Twitter. Uh, check out the Bet US College Football Show. We've already started rocking over there. There's going to be a show on Wednesday. Make sure and check that out. Uh, we're doing our favorite regular season win totals. You will get my picks over there as well. Uh, with that said, I think it's time to get out of here. You guys take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Uh, God bless college football, of course. And hopefully, hopefully all your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.